This is MXUX. I think foreign investment might play a part in Lord Stein Motors funding. Let's take a look. Hi, this is MXUX. This might be a little noisy. Got some people outside. Why ride funding could come from abroad? I don't think a lot of people are thinking about this. I think you have to take a close look at what's going on in the world. Everybody's wondering about rides funding need. They're closing out the year with about 200 million, I believe. And I just saw 12 million in debt, uh, which I think is tooling. Now, China is the focus for now. Now, this is a picture, kind of a small picture of the former president of uh, Xi Jinping's predecessor being led out of the CCP Party Congress by uh, his bodyguards, not the former uh, office holders' bodyguards, but by Xi Jinping's bodyguards. Now, you know, Stalin esque. I don't know. Not here to judge. In any case, Taiwanese capital is flowing out of China and going elsewhere. Okay? And I don't think this is going to help things. Now, I found just a quote from 2019. 1.2 billion of capital flowed to Vietnam. That's up 56% okay over the previous years now that's 2019 who knows what it is now but just to give you an idea now here's the thing uh this investment in vietnam they had to come to a special bilateral investment agreement required to protect the investors because the vietnamese law the parties felt wasn't strong enough to protect the investors so okay Fair enough. We got uh, Foxconn operating in Indonesia and uh, possibly in India and um, in Thailand. How those security laws there are unknown, but they are addressing putting localized uh, joint ventures, I believe, uh, to manufacture products there. Uh, but uh, so this is not a bed of roses, okay? Now, this is from Reuters. Now, uh, it's already been flowing out of China, the capital, and into Taiwan. Capital outflow is likely temporary. Okay, this is September 28th. Uh, capital outflows are a temporary phenomenon and uh, high enough currency to maintain its financial markets. So the TWI... Taiwan stock market is tanking. Uh, money is coming out. Um, and the point I'm making with all this right here, between the, the capital coming out of China and the capital coming out of the, uh, out of the Taiwanese stock market and the political ramifications of what is going on in China vis-a-vis uh, -vis Taiwan or Taipei, however you want to look at it, we got a cash rich investment class in Taiwan and they are looking to invest somewhere else. Okay. Now, if you invest in the United States, the, the BIA that was required in Vietnam is not required. Uh, the USA, you know, the SEC, you know, a NASDAQ-listed security like Ride, I mean, it's basically bulletproof as far as protecting the investor. Um, and just reporting, and, and let's just talk about the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. They just updated it, okay, last week. Well, this is 9-6, but you get, uh, well, anyway, this is 9-6-2002. But the point is... Uh, this is, this makes the CFO personally responsible for the financial statements. This is, this is, uh, was put in place to combat fraud and, um, uh, so forth. And, uh, it's, it makes the NASDAQ and the other U.S. stock exchanges as far as reporting and protecting 
all of this is qualified. So it's much easier to invest in the United States than around the world. You don't need special agreements, okay? Uh, especially in times of uncertainty. And I think it's safe to say that the USA right now, even with the faults, is the best place to invest in the world. Now, you might be saying, well, um, there is no citizenship requirement uh, to buy and own a NASDAQ listed security. You, you might say, well, foreign investors, you know, how much can they own? I mean, we got the 10% rule of owning 10% of the company. And at that point, you you, get, you become a special um, individual. Uh, but if you're buying less than 10%, 9.9%, whatever, you do not have a citizenship requirement. Anyone in the world can invest. Now, there is there is Homeland Security does, does require uh, identity verification. So, um, and this is uh, state-sponsored uh, terrorism uh, related um, and uh, also sanction related. Other than that, there is no, so, so uh, you know, what I'm saying here is uh, your investment, anyone that wants to invest from Taiwan into the United States, number one, as safe as a securities investment can be, I think the USA is the gold standard. There is no barrier to entry. I think uh, I'll put a caveat in there, less than 10% ownership uh so there's nothing stopping <clears throat> a taiwan national to invest in a u.s company now i have here now this is inside information i have and this has been confirmed and i'm not going to identify the individual uh that this is about but i have investigated his background and this is an individual um, who, who has the means to make a sizable investment, him or his organization, in Lordstown Motors via stock purchase uh, or some other, you know, financial um, device. Um, He's a major player in the Taiwan fintech industry, and he has personally visited the Lordstown plant and reviewed the operations there. Okay. There is no other news available at this time. I have no idea what the outcome of that visit was. I just know that he was physically there on the ground uh, in Lordstown, Ohio. And this is a Taiwan national. So I just think everybody needs to open up their mind, expand their mind, and think about funding and how creative Dan Niavaji has been and Hightower and Kroll in working out the business model of Lordstown. And I'm sure they're going to apply that same uh, type of thinking to the funding. Now, uh, I think that's pretty clear. And I think there is, you know, a 50% chance that that's going to happen of foreign investment. Now, I'm just going to close this out and make it a, fa a short video. Now, Ride, Lord Sam Motor Stock, is the only way to invest in Foxtown, Lordstown which is their flagship battery electric vehicle operation currently, and Foxconn, which makes 40% of all the electronics on the planet, is pivoting to battery electric vehicles. Lordstown is their crown jewel. It's the only automotive plant they own that I know of, and their owner operators, and Ride is their joint venture partner in this expedition so if you want to if you believe that foxconn with its expertise can pivot 
to battery electric vehicles from cell phones, which they are going to do. Uh, this is not something that's up, you know, that's even a question. The only way you, if you want to invest in Foxconn, you you have to buy on the on the TAIX, the Taiwan Exchange, and we just went over the political risks facing Taiwan. And we went over the Taiwan market and how uh, capital is fleeing the Thai, uh, Thai X. And um, if there were political actions taken there, it could further depress that market. Now, so, uh, I mean, if you wanted to invest in Foxconn, you certainly could directly invest in Foxconn. It is going to be on that exchange. Um, there may be some other, you know, uh, exchange traded fund or so so forth that that, that invests invest in Foxconn. I don't know if that's true or not, but the point is to have a Nasdaq listed security that is is covered by Sarbane Oxley, that is covered by the SEC, that is covered by the DOJ, that has transparency requirements, that has recording reporting requirements, secure uh, investor protections, and so forth. Ride is the only way to invest in Foxtown, Lordstown. And certainly anyone looking to get money out of the TAIX that wants to be a part of this is going to go to a NASDAQ listed security. And that security is right. And that is why I think uh, we could see foreign money uh, in some fashion funding ride uh, a, a stock purchase, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, Dan Niavaji is a New York money guy. Kroll is a good CFO. I'm sure they can come up with the right setup for that. Anyway, regardless, I mean, this makes perfect sense. This is logical. This is the only way to, to make this play, in my opinion, at this point in time, with the macro environment being what it is. Now, uh, Ride is also producing uh, commercial vehicles and by this time selling commercial vehicles. Now, let me just go into, sorry about that, the last point of this, additional funding possibilities for Ride. Okay. If they, if this didn't come through some foreign investment, maybe they're waiting to see uh, the proof in the pudding. Uh, Yorkville Advisors Associates, I believe they have at least two tranches, maybe three tranches left there. I do believe they could tap that again for a stock dilution for twenty-five to fifty million dollars, and that is done okay so i do believe they have uh the ability to raise this through that item uh also as you know we've authorized <coughs> additional st shares not a great time to do publicly offer more shares at least not at this point in time uh, but that is also another possibility now the idea of entering into a partnership was specifically mentioned uh, by Danny Avaji, and I've seen it in the press a couple times. What this partnership may be, we don't know. It was mentioned in conjunction that we have a uh, earnings call coming up the 8th of next month. Uh, this was mentioned with the white label manufacturing in the same breath as the white label manufacturing. Um, specifically uh, during the last earnings call and in the, in the press as well. The point may, you know, are they going to produce a white label um, or Lordstown Endurance badged under another OEM manufacturer's badge to be sold as a consumer version? Um, we can see none of the OEMs, major brands can even get, half their orders filled, uh, Stellantis has no offering, so on and so forth. So this is another thing that could bring revenue or 
cash to the equation. Um, there is a debt possibility. We have $12 million of debt on the books. Uh, so there is room for debt. You know, high interest rates. I think this is unlikely with Kroll. He's a, he's a good manager. He's going to avoid this. Now, this is something that eventually is going to show up. Whether it will show up on the next earnings call is a question in my mind, and it has to do there. There are a lot of you know agreements that could change these terms and uh, change the payment levels and the payment times. Um, this is operating through the joint venture, the MED joint venture, but Lordstown Motors. Uh, by the Motion and Harmony, Harmony Electric Vehicle Development Joint Venture uh, is, is going to generate revenues for engineering and design. Okay? Uh, are those going to show up? I think those are, at some point, going to show up uh, on the balance sheet of Lordstown Motors I do believe that uh, this is going to be uh, uh, one of the major ways that they, in fact, fund future manufacturing uh, is through this uh, clever uh, business model. Uh, but, of course, those may come up in the next call. And let's not forget this last one. Although production is limited this year, and we know that March of next year is supposed to be D-Day as far as uh, starting real mass production. We're going to have fleet sales or leases and or leases. I read an article saying that they were going to stick to leases, which is a great idea. Uh, they're going to have fleet sales and leases, revenue, and related carbon credits. So this is, this is a definite. <laughs> the fleet sales, as limited as they may be, is a de are a, def a definite. The Y Associates tranche is a definite, a definite. They can offer stock, probably won't. Partnership, this is something they have been talking about. Debt, they certainly can do, and this is coming at some point in time. Okay, this is MXUX. I just wanted to go over a few of these things. I think uh, I've said in my, I'm not a financial investor, so forth, and I have said in my other uh, videos that once uh, sales start, that the funding is not going to be a problem. I think there's a lot of big money people holding their breath to see, you know, can Lordstown now, it's always the next hurdle for Lordstown. I mean, this was the same thing with Tesla. But can they deliver, and they will, of course, deliver a product? Of course they will. Can they write a lease? Of course they will. Do they have customers? Of course they do. So this shoe is going to drop likely in the next earning call i think they're going to announce that they've sold units and again all these uh, funding options are going to open up in addition to foreign investment foreign investment okay this is mxux thanks for stopping by good luck in the market